Good day everyone, welcome to this video. Today it's the review on the 7534 M43. Now of course I did say I wasn't going to do a review on this thing. But then I thought, well, I've only had one battle in it. And you can't really tell much of a vehicle by first battle, especially when Russian bias is involved. So maybe it might get better. And to be honest, it did for the most part. But... You need heat, like, I wouldn't even bother going for parts first, to be truthfully honest. I'd go straight for heat. I didn't, I went parts, because knowing my luck, I'll get shot in a gun breach, and then that's the end of me. But, um, I would recommend, if you're going for this tank, I don't recommend driving it personally. But, go straight for heat. You need this round. Especially in an up tier. But anyway... Let's go over the vehicle. So, obviously, I've done a review on the 7546 M43, and it's exactly the same chassis. The only thing that's changed is the gun. Now, you have a roughly comparable fire rate to the 46, but of course, you don't have a machine gun, and also, your guns are a lot smaller, and that's what she said. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, that had to be done. Um, overall, the armor is... A bit better because you don't have to fight T3045s and IS1s and things like that. As well as 76 M4A3s, which are just absolute nightmare fuel. But overall, this thing's armor isn't too bad. Obviously, I'm not going to go with the armor because it's exactly the same as the 46 if you've seen that review. But just briefly, it's 100 if you hit here and here. It's 115 if you hit the driver's port here. And, well, the rest of it's unchanged. I mean, there's a bit on the on the sides that adds to the armor. This has actually saved me from a Yak-9T. Because the Yak-9T came in far too low. And overall, the gun did do reasonably well. It's just... Jumbos. That's really your main worry, shall we say. Now, of course, I did do it in combination with the M42. I didn't use this pretty much at all during that, so that's why... It was still well. Obviously, when I've done the well, I've done the review on this thing already, you'll see that before this. But during that time, I didn't have the transmission. Now, though, after a match that I sent off to the digital time traveler, where it's another live die repeat, I'm afraid people. The Italian teams are getting worse, and obviously, I'm sat in a spag. I can't do much. But we're not too far away from the spade for this thing, for real. But hey, we'll see how that goes. But like I say, I recommend going straight for heat with this thing because you will be fighting KV-1 Sys 5s and your AP is going to do jack shit. With just 75mm of pen, you'll be lucky to pen this side if you're at point blank range. Which I don't recommend you do anyway because Russian bias will get through your front armor. But anyway, let's get into the battle. Now I did hate this tank at first because... The gun was just so weak. My recommendation, however, though, is to carry 35, I'm saying full ammo here, 35 heat. I have not been ammo right once in this vehicle, so that's why I carry full ammunition. The ammunition is very safe on this vehicle. But yes, my recommendation is 35 heat, 10 AP. Those are for lighter targets, heat are for the big boys. And you are going to see a couple of big boys here because it's a 4.7 match. You'll even see a Churchill Mark 7, which I somehow managed to kill one of those in my M42 SPAA. Don't ask me how, I just did. It was just pure luck. The Churchill drove past completely blind as a bat. And well, yeah. So in this battle, at the time, obviously, of this battle, I'm missing crew replenishment. Filters, transmission, engine, um, what other stuff am I missing? I miss, well, I was missing tracks, brakes, suspension, and the turret drive module. And straight away, there's a tank over here. It's actually a BT-5 that's pushed extremely hard. But a heat round is more than adequate to deal with him. First kill for me. Now in a 4.7 game, there, was, there is quite a few tanks that can actually penetrate your armor. 
Russian bias will penetrate your armor, as per usual. American 76s can penetrate your armor. Jumbos can penetrate your armor if they load APCR and sometimes even AP. And there you can see a jumbo right there. This 7534 M42 was blocking me, so I couldn't pull around for a shot on him. And the jumbo teaches him a vital lesson to not bring a 3.3 tank destroyer into a 4.7 game. I don't know why he would block me there because I could have gone for the MG port on the jumbo. Whilst it's not reliable with the heat round, I could still have a chance. The Panzer 4G to my right takes out one of the jumbos because there's actually two in there. And a spot escape one. He drives forward just a little bit too early. Well, he just drives forward. Then he reverses. I pump a heat round in. Job done. Second kill. I'm surprised the fuel tank of that Russian tank did not stop my heat shell. But hey, I'll take it. I don't fire a single AP round just for out in this battle, people. Because the only real vehicle that could be killed by my AP is the ASU, the T-34s, and the Shermans. And even then, I'm loading the heat for those guys, because killing those with AP is very debatable. The BT-7 can be killed by it, but still. And there's going to be an ASU pushing up on the left-hand side, just between the gap and those rocks, where I'm just going to move the closer to now. Just between these rocks here, that is where an ASU is going to be pushing. There's also a jumbo there, which I didn't actually know at the time. And there's also a heavy tank down there, of some description. There you can see the ASU. I was hoping to do the cheeky blind fire trick. But the gun is just a bit too high velocity for that. Even with the heat rounds. Second jumbo has just been killed. I've capped the point, taken a cap for me. As well as that Panzer 4 H. And at the moment we're holding the cap. I was waiting for the ASU to come up, so I marked his location. Obviously, you can't see that in the replay. And I thought, right, well, I'm going to go up to one of my favorite spots. Now, obviously, there are several tanks on the enemy team that I cannot harm, even with heat. That being a jumbo, except from the side. Or the MG port. And also, the Churchill Mark 7, because they have one of those for some reason. And good luck trying to kill the Churchill Mark 7 with your AP round people, because it won't work. And his gun is just as ca capable of knocking you out, even if his gun isn't all that much greater. You're about to see a T-34 pop up like a champagne bottle in a second. Obviously I spot this T-34, I start pulling back but obviously well, you're a small vehicle, so you're not exactly going to get anywhere. I spotted the BT-7, but I said didn't know what it was at the time. Now, in the replay, it shows the watchtower being destroyed. It was not. I had to shoot it with a heat round. I actually missed the first time, but that second one actually destroyed it. Just thought I'd point that out. Now in a few moments, we're going to have multiple enemy tanks pushing down the right hand side. They can see an ASU, another jumbo, which has been detracked. And if you look over to, well just in front of you, you saw that burning wreck of a T-34. And what remains of him, his little turret, which I find hilarious. Now, your small profile doesn't really help in this position. But, if you give it some welly, once you get into a better position, of course, you can stick your gun over. Only just. So you just give it some welly, full power, and there we go. Heat round straight through. Last two crew members in that KV-1 dead. Third kill.
this position I'd recommend you use in something like a Panzer IV because it's slightly taller. Or maybe like a Sherman. That would be more preferred. Now I saw this guy with his bushes on and I hate people that use bushes. Wait until he passed the watchtower. And well you won't be doing that one again buddy. Fourth kill. Now I only actually got two aces in this thing. This is one of them. And the other one was the second to last battle I had in it. I mean, it's not the best vehicle, but there's your ace. Um, it got the job done. I mean, it could deal with the lower tier tanks perfectly fine, as you're seeing here. I mean, I just butchered that Sherman in a single shot. But Churchill Mark 7s, Jumbos, they are going to be a nightmare. And probably someone's going to ask in the comments, how many Jumbos did you kill? Two. Both of AP. One was for the empty port, one was for the other side of the tracks. Because he didn't know I was there. And here you're about to see the other 4.7 tank that I actually killed, and my final kill for the match. That M6. Now for some strange reason, there's a poor start and a pea shooter. No idea why. I spot the M6. I know exactly what the M6 is capable of. And I was trying to get a shot just above the machine gun port right there. Because that would have shrapnel perfectly taken out everyone in the turret and then I could go for his crew in the hole. But no. Angled the tank perfectly. His 76 bounces, his 37 hits a rock. And well, the M6 is going to sit there for a bit. I mean, personally, mate, I wouldn't be too, too concerned, but I would not be driving the M6 the way you are. I'd be behind one of those rocks. And there's the Mark 7 Churchill I was on about, just over to your left. Well, more like our left. I do apologize about that. One second. There we go, and we're back. Apologies about that, that is a... Um, that was... Richie D, he's finally downloading War Thunder again at this time. T34 there gets blown to pieces, which I love to see. And here we're about to see the heat round of the or this tank struggling against an M6. But for some strange reason, I aim one degree to the left. And it goes right through. Don't ask me how. But we got a 4.7 kill, so I'm well happy with that match. And that's pretty much the end of it, people. I'll wait, in fact, no, I'll, I'll wait till I'm out of binos first. That's better. So what did I think of this thing? Well, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Sorry if you can hear that Subaru outside. Um, yeah, I've got the windows open again because my PC's been a bit warm. Like I say, this thing is not great. The gun is outdated at its BR massively. If you get up to fight 4.7, such as Jumbos and M6s, good luck with your stock shell. You might have a chance for the upgraded shell. Prioritize heat, then go parts and FPE, and then just go up to tree. That's really all I can suggest. But other than that, this thing isn't too bad. It's just the gun is terrible. But other than that, this thing was a lot of fun to drive, actually. I mean, I got a couple of hull break kills on a few ASUs, a couple of BTRs things like that. It was a lot of fun. So if you want to try and see what this thing can do, by all means, but if you just go 0.3 BR high pip or higher sorry people, you get the 7546. That's a heck of a lot better. I promise you that. But anyway, I'm gonna go get Richie D back into War Thunder and I will catch you all on the next one.